Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Today, we're going to be making a gift box shaped like a suitcase. I hope you'll stay tuned. I saw a woman named Linda Barker make a box similar to what I'm going to be making, and I thought I would um, link her video so you can look at that. But here's what I did. My girlfriend just retired, and her job was... Um, in banking and she was in a very stressful position and for the last probably 20 years it wasn't an easy position so I found this Etsy shop I think it's called CA Souls but I'm not sure what they make are bracelets and the bracelets are in Morse code and you pick eight letters that's the most you can do, including spaces. And I thought it would be nice to say find joy because all this time she's really struggled with finding joy in this job that she had. And now that she's retired, I'm sure she can find joy. And you're, you put their little birthstone there. It comes with the little pouch. It's really well made. It was almost $50. I didn't mind paying that because I thought it was beautiful and all the reviews on this company were great. In case you're interested, I'll put a link below. I am not affiliated with them. You know I'm not affiliated with anybody. You know I don't make any money off any of this. I just thought it was so pretty. And no one's going to know what this says beside her. You know what I'm saying? They're just going to think it's little dots and dashes, which I think is just lovely. So she could, if she doesn't um, want it to say fine joy, she could say to anybody, it says uh, be your best self. I don't know. Anyway, so I wanted to make a packaging for this we're going to start out with the base of our box which is 10 and 1 8 by 8 and 3 quarters you're going to have to use 12 by 12 paper for this just because there's just that little bit that quarter of an inch that's too big the top is going to be 9 and 5 eighths by 8 and 3 eighths then you're going to need a handle this is the handle and it is I gotta find my notes five and three quarters by one and a half and then uh, this piece is going to be the cover for our box it is I'm pretty sure it's ten and a half by four and a half ten and a half by four and a half and then you're going to need four circles these are one and one half inch circles but it says one and a quarter on the side but that's a lie it's one and a half Actually, it's one and a quarter. That might actually work better for me. Um, the one and a half inch that she used was just a little bit tight. I'm going to use the one and a quarter. First thing we're going to do, we're going to put aside our paper that's going to cover the box. We'll do our handle first. So the first thing we're going to do is score our handle just because it was laying there. And I thought, why not? On the one and a half inch length, you're going to score it at three quarters all the way down. On the five and three quarter inch side, you're going to score at three quarters of an inch and one and a half inch. You're going to turn it around and you're going to score it again at three quarters and one and a half. And then you're going to fold it in half like that and we're going to just put some tear tape along the inside edge I'll show you this in a second I know you probably can't see it where you're at right now and we're just going to take the backing off now I can never get my backing off there we go and then you're just going to close that Now, I don't know about all of you, but sometimes when you score, and I scored this in half, truly it was in half, but right here I have a little bit more paper than I should. Now you can do two things. You can either put it face down so no one sees it, or you can cut it off. Um, just because I figure um, most of us would do this, I think I'm just going to ignore it and put it underneath. So it's going to be on the bottom. Nobody's going to see it. You're going to take your 
scores that are closest to the center and you're going to fold them down so you have a nice clean fold and then the outer scores you're going to fold up like that so that you end up with what looks like a handle in a second it will look like a handle for you it's going to look like this when we put it on our package everybody with me okay set it aside we're done with that for now then we're going to take our pieces of big cardstock and we're going to do the base first on the 10 and an eighth side we've had in our scoreboard at 10 and an eighth you're going to want to score at one and three eighths and if you're not familiar with how to figure out what three eighths is if you count this is your one inch this is your two inch hopefully I'm in frame if you count the dashes between them this is one two three four five six seven and on the two that's your eighth line so in order to do three eighths you go one and one two three eighths so it's right there a lot of people get confused about eighths because they're kind of not used that often except in card making that's for sure then you're going to want to count uh, score at two and three quarters usually you know what the quarter marks are because the quarter marks are um, different colors let's see this is a two this is one two three quarters and then that's three if you follow that then we're going to do seven and three eighths again there's your seven and one two three eighths i want to make sure i get that well scored seven and three eighths and eight and three quarters oh boy i'm out of the track oh boy what else is new okay then you're going to turn it to the eight and three quarters inch side and you're going to score at one and three eighths one and one two three eighths two and three quarters okay six inches and seven and three eighths okay that's all the scoring we need to do on that one then we're going to take our lid the top to our box and on the nine and five eighths inch length you're going to want to score at one and a quarter one and a quarter two and a half oh boy move my paper two and a half seven and one eighth why doesn't want to stay it down in here seven and one eighth and eight and three eighths then you're going to turn it to the eight and three eighths side and you're going to score at one and a quarter Ooh. I'm going to stay in the score two and a half five and seven eighths five and seven eighths and seven and one eighth i hope this just keeps trying to come out of the grooves okay and then that i think is all our scoring we need to do you're going to take your circle and you're going to 
make sure you fold them in half. I'm going to get my bone folder. And there's that one folded in half. And then we're going to fold, we're going to fold all four of these in half. Okay, then you're going to unfold them and you're going to fold them the other way. Now I'm not going to force you to watch me do that the whole way with all of them. This one, you don't really need to um, burnish. You're just going to fold them, and I'll tell you why, because you're just going to cut them in half on that mark or on that line. So you don't really need, like this line doesn't need to be um, scored perfectly. There's all four of those. So then what you want to do, we're going to use these later. I know it's confusing because I'm not using them right away. You're going to unfold them, and on that, on that fold you just made, you're going to just do that. Well, it would probably be easier if I just do it this way, right? Where you leave it folded. And then we will set these aside for later. We'll make our box. Okay. So those are all ready to go for when we need those. Now let's work on our box. Let's uh, fold and burnish all of our score lines on our box. The paper stuck to me. I wanted to show you, I, if you remember I jumped out of the track, and I don't know if you can see that, right there I jumped out of the track. Normally, I would fix this and we would move on, but I'm just going to show you how to fix it because um, this isn't really going to make much of a difference. You're not going to see it, but here's how you do it. You take the raised, where it's raised like this, and you just take your bone folder or some kind of flat tool and you just rub it until it's gone, and that's how you fix that. There you have it. Probably showed you that a thousand times, and you're probably going, gee, Sandy, why do you keep showing us the same stuff? I don't know. I can't stop myself. It's a it's a problem. I can't do it. All right, then what we're gonna do is we are gonna take long bladed scissors. I'm not good with long bladed scissors, but I'm just saying we're gonna take long bladed scissors. And what we're gonna do is do you see? hopefully you can see I have four squares on each corner. We're going to cut on those score lines up to the second set of score lines on both of these little boxes. Then on the outermost box you're going to get rid of both of those two boxes. So you just want to cut them out Get rid of the score lines too. And on the second set of boxes, you're going to get rid of the first box. There we go. So then on this one, same thing. All four corners, we're going to do this. The long bladed scissors help you to get a nice straight, um, it, it just looks, your cut looks better, it doesn't get wonky. If you open it all the way, I didn't open mine all the way because, you know, I don't I don't roll like that. Because I can't open them all the way sometimes. Anyway, and then we're going to just cut the second, the first set of two off. And then the second one, you're going to cut just the first one, first little box out. Same thing on this side. We're going to get rid of this one. Now we're going to take... And we're going to cut on these boxes, we're going to just cut a little bit of a wedge out because we want to make sure that we get rid of any like extra um, paper so that when you put your box together, you don't have anything that looks kind of, um, it doesn't look right. And we're going to do the same thing on these little boxes. But I'm only going to do that to this corner, the outside corner. Now 
You don't want to cut out a ton. You just want to make get a, uh, enough out of there that you can turn your box into a box. I think I'm going to cut the edge of this one because I didn't get the score line out of there. Now you're going to do the exact same thing to this box. I'm not going to make you watch this because, um, well, I'm going to make you watch it, but I'm not going to make you, um, I'm going to have Rich do it fast so that you don't have to watch it. Now let's build our box. So we're going to use, I'm using some tear tape and some wet glue, I think. I'm going to put a little bit of tear tape. I think I'm going to put that right there. So we're ready to put our box together. The most important part of your box is knowing that these flaps are going to turn in like we're going to get you're going to fold them in like this to your sides so it's important that you put your tear tape right along that edge i'll just put a line there so you can see i'm going to put two on this one just because and again it's on the outside of your paper that you're doing that Okay, so I'm going to take off my backing here and we'll put this, this one together. You can use wet glue if you want. When I make boxes, I usually use um, tear tape. I get my tear tape off of Amazon and I like it. A lot of people have an easier time pulling off their backing than I do, but I think that's just because I'm just not good at it. Okay. So what you're going to want to do, I started this, but of course, you know, it went awry. You're going to want to line up your little tabs, your sides, even like that. Make sure they're even. Like that. And then you're going to want to put down your end flap. And we're going to these sides Ooh. and again make sure your side is even like that and this one after everything is even I don't know if it's the humidity or what but my tear tape does not want to stick which is odd because, you know, that's the nature of tear tape is it sticks. So I'm going to use some wet glue in addition to this. I'll lift up all my flaps, put some wet glue in all those areas. And then, hopefully, we'll get everything to stay down. Okay, I'm going to pull this one back up so you can see the little problem I'm having. I don't know if you can see this, but in this corner, there's a little bit too much paper. So I'm just going to try and pry that out with my finger and cut it off. And I'm just going to lift this up, cut it on an angle, if I can. So there's the inside of our box. I know, it wasn't pretty. I'm going to take off my backing of all of my tear tape. And I'm going to add wet glue to all of these flaps this time because clearly, for some reason, my tear tape, as I said, it's been very humid here, and I'm wondering if maybe my tear tape has been affected by the humidity. Anybody know anything about that? I don't know if it... I've never had it happen before, but I wasn't sure if maybe that was the problem this time. You never know. You want to get your two 
ends and you want to line them up so that they're straight. down. You want to make sure that you have got these well burnished and I'm going to uh, burnish the ends again after uh, the glue sets up because when you're putting your box together this is a very tight fitting box and you want to make sure that all of these um, edges are as clean as they can be and as tightly folded down as they can be so that when you put the lid on the lid will actually slide on if you know what I'm saying. If you've ever made a box where the lid didn't fit it probably was because you didn't pay enough attention to this and this is really really important making sure that these folds are really flat. Okay so let's see how we're doing. Again, as I said, this is a very tight fitting box. So you want to make sure that when you put it together, you remember that it's going to be a tight fit. Look how tight. Isn't that fabulous? Okay, now we've got this much done. So we're ready to go on to lining our box. Now, the way that Linda Barker did this is she started right where her boxes the lid and the base met and she just laid her paper on that then she made sure it was straight and then she folded it and creased it on each of her folds you know on each of the um, bends we'll call it you want to make sure that you do this so that you've done it tight enough that it will stay because this is basically the only thing that is making your box um, th this covering is not going to be attached to the box it's just going to be able to be slid off of the box so you want to make sure that you have it on here as tightly as you can but you also want to make sure that each one of these folds is clean and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my scoreboard and I'm just going to re basically rescore these just so they're nice and clean. Okay. Then I'm using very thick cardstock, so I want to make sure that this is nice and um, scored so that it will be able to be folded right onto my box. There's that one. There. Okay. So now my paper should be flat on my box, whereas before it would have probably been kind of bunched up. Or maybe I'm just making that up. You don't know, do you? So I'm going to, I'm not going to include the box. I think the box um, makes it too tricky for me to work with it. So I think I'm just going to put this in here somehow. So let's see. I started it like this. See how much nicer it folds around and then I'm going to put tear tape right on that edge. I'm probably going to do a couple rows of tear tape because I want to make sure this really stays adhered and since I'm already having issues with my tear tape sticking, it's a bummer. Make sure it's really well adhered. Now, this is going to be the top of my box because this is the part that has the, um, that where I adhered it. 
to itself. So I'd rather have it like this. It's going to look like luggage, as I think I already said. Now is when we're going to get serious about these little buggers. Here's what you're going to do. Remember, we have that fold like that. What we're going to do with it is we're going to put wet glue on the underside of it. You're going to put the straight side on the outside and you want to put it right up to the edge of your um, designer paper, your pattern paper, like that. Do it. We've got a whole bunch more to do, so I'll just keep doing these and showing them to you as I go. Again, right up to the, that line, the edge of the paper. This is what's going to make it look like a suitcase. Now, I could, I can do um, a uh, brad here. What I was thinking I would do is if I did a brad, I would just slide this off like this. And then do my little handle and put the brads in. On the other hand, I was thinking maybe I would corner around this. I wonder if that's possible. It's pretty thick. Okay. That worked. If you have never seen my Katamaro Pro, this is a really good corner rounder. It does a great job of making sure that you round the corners right. Okay, so I can't decide. I have these that I got from the dollar store that I thought about putting one of them on this, on the front of the bag. We're going to play with these and see which one looks good. But then I also need to do something with the um, top of it to see the, on that um, handle if a brad looks better or what looks better. I think I'm going to put that pink one. I took and I put my, what we'll call my um, handle, which I couldn't think of the name right there. And I poked holes with my hole punch, and then I did the same thing on here. After you know, I laid that on here, and then I made a little mark with a pencil, and then that way we're sure it'll stay where I want it to. And I'm going to put some tear tape on this, even though I'm going to use a uh, brad to hold them to hold the um, material down. I thought about doing um, something with some white scrap paper on top of this, like, um, well, let me get a piece of white paper and I'll show you what I was thinking about doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of paper this wide, which is an inch, I'm pretty sure. Let me measure it. No, it's three quarters of an inch. I'm still going to go with three quarters of an inch wide. And five and three quarters inch long. I'm using, this is a scallop punch that has little dots in it that are cut out of it. So the very first time you get one of these pieces in, you want to make sure that you line it up so that it's right at the edge of that first scallop. Then after that, you can you can use the front grid. If you've never done this, here's how you do it. Do you see this this these um, scallops over here? If you lay these on here so that it's exactly lined up in those holes. Oh, look, I didn't punch all the way through. Okay, we'll I'll go back and do it again. Hopefully I hit the marks. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Like that, okay. And then we can turn it over. Okay. Okay. Here it is. It's not perfect, so what I'm gonna do it's just lay it like this 
over my over the top of my project and again I used this is three quarters of an inch I used one inch piece of paper and I it's not cardstock it's just paper and I did that on purpose because I didn't want um, I didn't want to end up with um, a piece that was too narrow and this made it so it's you know even though I started with an inch this is what I ended up with a much thin thinner piece I'm digging a little bit of a hole with my scissors from underneath because like I said this is just plain copier paper it's not thick paper at all I wasn't sure if I'd be able to punch through regular cardstock with that with this because sometimes when you've got a really intricate pattern that you're punching out it's kind of hard to punch so if it doesn't make a difference to you I recommend you just use regular paper okay now my brads are pushed through here now I have the holes in this so I can put my brads through there as well but I also want to take my backing off of my tear tape so that I will be able to um, put these in place and have them stay where I put them. I think I also put a little wet glue under there because I want to make sure it doesn't move until I get the, you know, once the brads push through and attached it should be fine but sometimes when it's muggy you don't know. Okay, I put my brad all the way through and then all I have to do is underneath you just need to flatten it out. Make sure that you get that as flat as possible because remember you have to slide this back onto your box. I think the pink one because I put the pink brads up there I think this pink one will do it. I got if I didn't say this already I got these at the Dollar Tree. That's some pretty serious um, stick I got going there. Okay. Now, the only thing I have left to do, if I choose to do it, is to put a little a hang tag on there. I don't think I'm going to do that. Instead, I think I'm just going to um, put it with a card. But look how cute it is. Isn't that cute? Then all you have to do is slide the little box out. You could reuse it for anything you wanted to. You could give it as a gift again. I think this little thing I did on the top really makes the top of it look a lot better than it was looking. It was a little iffy, I thought. So that is it for the box. You'll be seeing me make a card for this because I have to get that done too in the next couple days. So, so I hope you enjoyed watching me make this little cute gift box. I love making these kinds of 3D things and especially when it's going to be um, a gift for one of my friends. I just love giving things like this and if you like doing it too I hope you make give this a try. It wasn't that hard to do and it turned out really cute. So I hope you enjoyed this and you give it a thumbs up and subscribe and please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that and thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.